Okay, welcome to the Tuesday Show. My name is... Go. Hey, welcome to the Tuesday Show. My name is... Ultra Davy. And I'm Jimmy C. How's everybody going? Here's your line. We're going to talk about these various topics. We're going to, we're going to talk about the esports arena and the Sonic Fox versus Goichi happenings. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about Mike Ross's AMA, etc. Esports, FGC. Yes. All uh, that stuff. We're going to talk about Tiger Uppercut results. Pretty cool tournament. We're going to talk about Animivo and the lineup of games that they have recently announced. Yes. Pretty cool. And then assorted other fighting game community news. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the docket. Cool. Well, let's start off with... Uh, it's the reason why we want to start with the esports arena stuff before we get into the Mike Ross thing. So yeah. let's talk about this. What 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 happened? What is this? Uh, what is the esports what is arena it? Las Vegas? Well, uh, there's an esports arena in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the esports arena from... Uh, there's one in Southern California. Mm-hmm. In whatever city that is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They're in Santa Orange County. Anna. Santa Ana. There's also <laughs> one that they're putting in Northern California. That's right. In Oakland, I think. And there's one in Vegas. Right. At the Luxor. Which just opened up, right? Correct. So they mm-hmm. had like an opening shindig. And part of it was to have Sonic Fox versus Goichi. Um, of course, they had high profile matches at final round. A week ago. A week before. <laughs> and... Famously, Goichi had called out Sonic Fox, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And then Sonic Fox called out Goichi, and that was like a very organic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. head-to-head kind of rivalry. Uh, from what I've heard, this esports arena thing like ha- was planned even before the final round like uh-huh, uh-huh. exhibition was planned. So it's not like they were just like, oh, let's capitalize. It like was a little bit planned, but um, in any case, as we covered last week at final round, Goichi gave the old. Dunkaroo to Sonic Fox. Yes, uh, uh, ten to three. Yeah, ten to four. Sorry, ten to four. Okay, uh, that's right, ten to four. And then also beat him in the actual tournament. Right, grand finals three zero. Oh, oh, it was a uh, oh, it was three zero oh, and then three two. Three two, I think. Yeah, three, if I recall two. correctly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So less of a blow up for sure. And then after final round, both of them traveled over to Las Vegas. They got in a bunch of casual sets against each other mm-hmm. at uh, Justin's place. Right, yeah. Justin Wong's house there, and. Goichi apparently was losing to Sonic Fox mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and was and was open about that. Yeah, Justin even said, like, oh, man, he's downloading Goichi now. So, you know, it seemed like uh, Sonic Fox started figuring things out. And right. They played each other in this first to ten at the eSports Arena right. launch. And, you know, from the match, you could definitely see that he figured a lot of new things out. For sure, for sure. He had way better timings on the alpha counters, basically. Yes. Like, he knew when to time it against... Adult Gohan's lightning kick, so that yeah. he wouldn't die, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. you could definitely tell that he, uh... like, he was using that hard tag OS. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. He his his offense seemed better and his defense seemed better, like on both ends. I yeah. felt. Uh, and so he started. He jumped out to a big lead. It was was it six to four at one point for okay. Sonic Fox. Uh, if I'm reading that right, yeah, that's what it was. And then after that, it was six to one Goichi. Mm-hmm. So. Goichi, you know, one way to look at this is that Goichi figured it out. Counter-adapted. Yeah, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mid-set. Another way is that Sonic Fox's pad wasn't working anymore. (laughs) (laughs) That was definitely something he brought up towards the end. He said that he was having some issues with the pad. And uh, he had to switch to a different pad, and it wasn't broken in like his was and everything. Yeah, I mean, I've never known Sonic Fox to lie about stuff. Uh, I don't think that's him, so I, I'll take him at his word. But man, that is a big bummer. Yes, that is uh, a, that uh-huh. super sucks. And you know, if you, you go back and watch a little bit, there are some times where like he's not moving like you might expect, and he like gets hit by stuff where it's just like a raw jump in, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you're like, why would you just get hit by like a raw jump in? <laughs> right. Uh, so you know, I don't want to like completely say that that's nonsense. If I were on commentary, I would be. I would have ripped him up for sure. Right, but I, I, I mean, I, I, when, I, it, when that camera yeah, came back to to, to yeah, Chris to Matrix, and, Chris, yeah, and yeah, they uh-huh. didn't rip on Sonic Fox, I couldn't believe it. Well, because remember, he I also plays at NLBC, and so they were, they're, you know, they're, they're they're for his boy, you know, they're yeah, for his boy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think he was lying. I, I yeah. just, it's just unfortunate. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, anyway, what did you think about it? I mean, did you did you watch it? Did you? Uh, see I it? did see it, and actually, I think are we still playing Uniel right now? Did you change us to? Uh, 
Did you change the title and everything like that? I did change the title, but I don't think I changed the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. We're still under Uni cool. right now. So here, let me type, change this. You here. got it. Under Night in Birth. That's right. Okay, there we go. All right, okay. But yeah, uh, people definitely... I mean, I, I don't think that he's in a situation where he was going to lie about it, but it definitely yeah. felt like it was kind of a similar thing where Goichi just kind of counterfigured him out a little bit. But, you know, again, now what are you supposed to think about it, right? I mean, it definitely looked like Sonic Fox had the read early on. It definitely seemed like that he figured something out that he was adapted a lot better to the matchup and that he was able to uh, weather the, the, the mix-ups from Goichi as well as land his mix-up more often. Because yeah. by the end of the final round set, he couldn't land anything. But it kind of went the same way, though. At the end of this set, he wasn't yeah. able to land as much stuff as well. Yeah, he was so. getting opened up more and he was opening up less, for mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. So whether that was just the pad or whether it was like the pad plus Goichi was like counter-adapting or what... I don't know, but it definitely seemed like Goichi was the best still. Right. Like, at least, mm -hmm, in, you know, mm -hmm. in that He's step. still the best. He's still the best it seemed for, like now. It. for now. So, but again, uh, not sure what to think about the whole, like, I don't know, like... Wh about their their matchup? About just the, the, the pad situation, like... Ah, yeah, I mean, it just sucks, you know, it, it's... Like, it, there's nobody to blame other than Sonic Fox. Like, you, you bring your own pad. Mm -hmm, you know, you mm -hmm, got to make mm -hmm. sure it's working. Right. If it had been a stick that no longer functioned, same problem. Like, you just <laughs> have to pay attention to, how, to what your right. equipment is. Yeah. Uh, did, did you actually see the picture of Fubar Duck at Tiger Uppercut? They said he was, like, desyncing hundreds of controllers yeah, from that, that, from the PlayStation 4. So, yeah. But, I mean, I think Sonic Fox uses a wired pad, though, doesn't he? I'm not sure. Okay, okay. But yeah, again, a lot of the times if your controller malfunctions, it's your fault. You can't really do Actually, anything. Actually, no, about I heard that. that he uses uh, that he was like running out of batteries, so I guess it couldn't oh, have been wired. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess what but did, no, they, I mean, did he, gotta... he actually leave a backup in his room or something like that? Is that what he talked about? Mm. So Yeah. So I guess some people are saying that he forgot it in a bag in his room or something like that. Well so. that that sucks. But uh, <laughs> But again, I don't think it was just that. It seemed like he was also getting outplayed. And, and as we mentioned last week, I also think that his team is not quite up to it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I play the uh -huh, same uh -huh. team, uh, just in reverse order, with 16 in the front and black in the back. And I, I feel like, although each individual character is very strong, that they're not as much of like a team as right. some other teams are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and especially the way that Sonic Fox plays it with black in the front, because that's really the only neutral assist among those three. With black in the front, uh, or even hit with with hit in the front, uh, I don't feel like it's like m max. Right, and and it was the same kind of hit. situation where his sixteen was doing so much work, yeah. and so I just like his solo sixteen would do so much work. Why wouldn't you use sixteen with assists? I, I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, although I do feel like sixteen is one of the best anchors. Right. He's uh -huh. also one of the best points because he's just yeah. one of the best characters. Uh -huh. He's just one of the, the best game. characters. Yeah. So for sure. yeah, I, I feel like that's still something he needs to look at, and and he is. I mean, he's been talking about how. He's looking at, you know, Adult Gohan. He posted up videos of Cell. He posted up videos of, or he's asking for videos about Gotenks. Like right. he's looking into all these other uh -huh, characters. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it's got to be, it's got to be more. Yeah. Okay. Because definitely Goichi is maximizing the nonsense. Mm -hmm, like you can mm -hmm. always count on Goichi yeah. to pick the top tier. Uh -huh, he did. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then you get that. So that's what he should do. <laughs> that freaking Vegeta assist all day, helping him out and everything. Dude. It definitely so, is good. Yeah. There's no and doubt. Cell to Cell. I joke that Cell is basically now my version of Urian of, for Dragon Ball. And someone was like, because I was like, Cell has everything and blah, blah, blah. And a bunch of people were like, how does that comparison make sense? Urian doesn't have everything. And I was like, no, no just in how much I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Okay. Because that character drives me nuts right now. Yeah, Cell drives pretty me good. nuts. Pretty so, good character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the actual match. Anything else to say about the actual gameplay? Um, not, not offhand, no, no. So that's there's not, obviously a lot to say about everything else. Exactly, right. So so that's not all we wanted to talk about with respect to the esports arena stuff. There was also the production of it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was confusing, I felt. It was just like kind of scatterbrained in a way. On, on the one hand, very high-level maximum esports, mm -hmm, right? Some mm -hmm. of the video packages that they produced. The one about Sonic Fox, I actually thought was nice, uh -huh, uh -huh. right? I didn't, like, I didn't have much objection to that. But, you know, some of the things where they, like, they're, like, walking through the hallway and they're, like, let's catch up with what they were doing and in like, Las Vegas. And they, like, slow motion and then they do the whole Dragon Ball yeah, pose, you yeah, know. Uh -huh. uh, come on, right? That's, yeah. all right, could do yeah. without that. But at the same time, 
the stream was like weird quality at, for a period. It was just real bad. Like, was just like every, I don't know how it happened bad. They activate super and like the screen would just turn half gray. Like yeah. it would just disappear all of a sudden and there were just artifacts everywhere. And yeah, there was definitely a lot of issues. And I wonder if it is just like an internet problem that they had to lower their bandwidth otherwise, or their, their bit rate. Right. Because it just was eating up too much of the bandwidth. Wouldn't, or wouldn't it be wild if Esports Arena in Luxor right. uh-huh. didn't have like great bandwidth? I just. There's got to be something right. uh-huh. else. It had I just to don't think that something. could be it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't want to bust them too much for having initial problems because it's mm-hmm. like opening night more or less. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. that's okay. It's, it just it just felt confusing because that you have screwy stream uh, quality and also just like maximum esports packages. And some people were saying Rocket League looked fine. So yeah, yeah, the other uh, stuff was, from what I could see, was fun. So what happened? Do they have some weird settings on the PlayStation? Maybe I don't know. I, re- but... I really don't. There, there was other stuff too, uh, like there was Smash Four, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. which I didn't really get to see much of, uh, or I chose not to, more accurately. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, just continue, to be real, yeah, buddy. Continue, yeah, continue, continue. We'll, we'll just gloss over that. Go ahead. Uh, continue. Anyway, um, and very, very amusingly, one, one of the times that they were talking about the match, the match was actually happening already uh-huh. and they were like all right let's go into the match apparently they've already started bayonetta had already won <laughs> like like literally it's like a it was just like a produced joke like they went back to the screen and it says ko and like that's it <laughs> it was like exactly at that moment oh, it was man. crazy so so, funny. so but that's 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 part of the weirdness of it is is that they're doing all these fancy things and and the venue looked super fancy mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. um and at the same time, making these like weird choices, like to have to br- come back to the Smash Four video like right then, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. rather than when the match actually started. So I, I don't know, dude. It's pretty weird. Pretty weird. Yeah, and then and then apparently a, a lot of people had issues with the translator as well. Right. So apparently she kept embellishing things that were not actually happening. Right. So apparently Goichi was like, "I will try my best." And she <laughs> yeah. was like, "I will win." Come at me or something like that, and it was just like, and Goichi even looked confused. He's just like, yeah. I don't understand English, but that sounds like more than what I said. <laughs> he definitely knows some words, right? Like uh-huh. I've I've said words to him like a oh, little okay, bit minimally, okay. you know, okay. not not much. And and uh, and right, I told you last week that when Dogra beat Goichi, Dogra was like yapping at him and was like, "Oh, are you yeah, salty?" Yeah. You know? uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, when that when that happened, there were some other things that they were saying that like, uh, or that. Other people were saying in English that they could hear that I saw them like oh, looking. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. So there's some words in there, not okay. not a lot though. <laughs> oh man, that's actually funny. Oh, he can read English, so I guess yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I mean oh, he, so like I said, he's. I've had minimal conversations with him. He hasn't talked a lot, but maybe he just understands me, and that's fine. Hmm. Some people so. are saying that you know the translator was reading a script or something like that. Was it? Did they pre-plan what they were going to say for the interview or something like that? I don't know, I don't but know, that but seems but kind of in keeping with like how the things problems. were. Yeah. Were uh-huh, run. Uh-huh. So there's this there's this esports stuff that came out of this, right? It, it, yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's it's just like a side of. The esports style of production that we in the FGC just don't care for. Uh, I don't. I kind of don't get why other scenes are okay with it, but mm-hmm. uh, I guess they are or can't do anything about it or right. whatever. But uh, for us, I felt like it, it helped open up another discussion into esports versus FGC, which kind of brings us into the second right. topic here. I mean, like, one of the things that I was tweeting about, too, is that one of the reasons why I feel like a lot of these productions feel the need to do these yeah. arm pose, you know, stuff and oh, slow motion going, because I think that they, in their hearts, are embarrassed by video games. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, oh, we, we need to make them cool. Right. So let's make them do these things here. Let's try to make them look badass. Let's try. Right. And it's like, you make games look cool by in your heart believing that games are cool. For <laughs> like, sure. You know, that's the thing. It's like, you don't do it by trying to mask what it is. Like I said, yes, a lot of these players are very antisocial and they are not very good social. Not even that know? many, to be honest, but right. some of them certainly. But some of them can be, right? So for and, sure. And sure, so, so there might be some awkward. So just 
talk to them about the game. Let their game do the talking for them, you know, kind of situation. Or find the guys like a K. Brad, who who you will just get the best interview out of, no matter what. You know what I mean? Like that we're there, but then if you have one of those awkward interview things, don't try to like hype it up with something weird. Just have show Goichi in his training, like like have B roll footage of Goichi training and then Sonic Fox training, and then yeah. just showing that kind of stuff. Don't. Don't do like I said, the arms folding or whatever, all that stuff. No, like that. I, so. I, I think what you bring up is that sounds right to me because what I've often thought about esports, even down to the name of it, is that it's about sportsifying video mm-hmm, games mm-hmm. because yeah. video games aren't good enough. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's in. It's literally in the name. Like you need to call it esports instead of video games because that's not mm-hmm, cool mm-hmm. enough or whatever. Uh-huh, it is. Exactly. Um, not marketable enough or whatever. So that that definitely, I think, is in keeping with mm-hmm. with what I expected about um, esports. But it's not obviously it's not always like that. Now there are I feel some productions that have roots in esports that are that are great. Mm-hmm. It's not always bad. Oh yeah, yeah. but uh, but there is that that sort of feeling of phoniness that comes in sometimes, and mm-hmm. and that uh, has been around for a long time. It has been. You know, a big part of why in the FGC were we were suspicious yeah. about it. I mean, I, I see some people in chat mentioning like it's not necessarily embarrassment, just copying sports, actual TV sports commentary and stuff like that. I'm fine with that. Like, I actually think that's cool because a lot of times they do that, but it's not like you're not going to, like, for example, when ESPN decides to try to show something about like Scrabble, they're not going to make the Scrabble kids run down a hall that's like all colored and, and, and stuff like oh that. Oh my god! You know what I mean? But it's still a sports production. You know yeah. what I mean? It's you can do sports production without trying to turn it into something it's not. Well, even in sports, I mean, I don't watch that many sports nowadays, uh-huh. but I did for many many years, and I don't recall that many like hockey games. That had like, let's check out what the competitors were doing beforehand. They walk down a menacing blue hallway. <laughs> I don't think so, right? How often does that even happen? Right. Uh, uh, because, because <laughs> like you like hockey. That's uh-huh, why you're uh-huh. watching this hockey yeah, TV yeah. program because you just want to follow hockey, uh, and like you already like it. You don't need the extra like nonsense, you know. Uh-huh, just uh-huh. like have conversation with the players, which is what they did. Right. They were just like after the after the game, you just have a conversation with whoever the goalie uh-huh. was, or hey, how'd yeah, it go? Uh-huh. All right. You don't. You don't need any of the extra stuff because it's good on its own. It's right. already legitimate. You don't mm-hmm. need the extra mm-hmm. stuff. Exactly. You don't need exactly. the phoniness. Don't have to turn it into something that's not. Yeah. That's just all it is. So. That, and that, that's not to say that there's not like the extra glitz and stuff in, yeah. in sports productions. You know, they sometimes uh, do a lot to make the make things seem more epic. You know, right. what I mean, that definitely does happen. But I'm not necessarily opposed to that if it's done in a reasonable way. I just mm-hmm. didn't think that part of what esports arena did was reasonable. Right. Uh, I mean, perfect examples like Red Bull Kumite had some of those things where they had um, like Butex follow uh, Luffy and Kayane mm-hmm. and you know, kind of like seeing what they're doing. That's or right. Like yeah, that. yeah, their local scene. Even even Evo on ESPN has always been produced by Ten O. That's true. And so it was still sport. And so you had those sequences where like Tasty Steve is talking about the Evo Perry, the Evo moment, and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> where he described it as like driving a car through a window and then he explodes and all. You know, like it was something crazy, like, but it was genuine because yeah. it was Tasty Steve being yeah, Tasty yeah. Steve, right? And it's like I said, you know, anytime you're genuine about something, it comes off on camera, you know what I mean? But when you get someone like Goichi and Sonic Fox walking down through a colored hallway, and I know we're harping on that particular sequence. It's just but, so silly. Yeah, I saw that and like, I, it made me want to turn off my computer. Yeah. Like I was just like, oh, I don't want to see this. Like those those two dudes are mega nerds. You know, I've hung out with them. They're <laughs> they're very nice. I like them both, but they're for sure all they were doing in Vegas was playing Dragon Ball. Yeah, uh-huh, there uh-huh. were there's nothing else. Definitely. <laughs> like maybe they went out to Korean barbecue with Justin or whatever. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like that's it. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And and I and I think that's fine. I think that's cool. Like that's what I'm interested in right so i don't need the extra whatever just right and like i said i feel like that's over overcompensating for their yeah. own internal embarrassment about video games yeah. you know what i mean so it's like you can't just do the regular thing you have to go over the top to make right. them that much better and as opposed to just like this is cool on its own one of the reasons why like the poker productions on espn work so well is because they eventually just started highlighting the players but did so in a very true normal fashion it wasn't like crazy Oh, look at these poker players. Yeah, they're not like cartoon stuff. characters. Though. Right, exactly. Except for that one dude in the hat. He's in like a cartoon character. Wait, which <laughs> one? Uh, 
He had long hair and he always wore a hat. You're talking about Chris Jesus Ferguson? That sounds right, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> that guy was awesome, though. <laughs> I guess he so. actually could throw cards and cut fruit. Like, what? He, yeah, he would, he, he could actually do okay, that. They had right. a whole segment on him and he was like chopping bananas with a, with a, with the playing cards. Wow, and that's so. pretty cartoony. So, yeah. all right. <laughs> Good stuff, then. Chris Jesus Ferguson. You can is back awesome, that up, dude. I guess. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, the, the production could have been a lot better. Um, I just, I, we don't need, it's, it's like when E-League did the, the security guard with mm-hmm, Wolf Cronin and mm-hmm. K-Rat. You just let them have a rivalry and that's fine. You don't need to like play up the extra right. uh-huh. nonsense of it because everybody knows it's just shtick. Mm-hmm, you weren't mm-hmm. actually worried about them fighting, like obviously. Right. Um, so why have the extra shtick? And plus, let's say they did play each other and no one fought and they didn't say anything. That's part of the story. Yeah. Automatically. For sure. You know what I mean? So, you so know. I, you know, there's things that you don't need. And to Elix's credit, they didn't do that kind of thing again. And when Injustice came around, I felt like they had a better, like, grasp on how to mm-hmm, handle FGC mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, could have been better. But, uh,. Esports, you know? Yeah. You, know, you want to move on to the next thing? I mean, Seth Killen has always said the thing about Evo, for example, right? It's like they just put it there and magic happens. You know, yeah. like that that's kind of thing. So even like at Capcom Cup, the fact that Nemo and Itazan got to play each other and Nemo even got to do the handshake thing to Itazan, that was all organic. You know what I mean? It right. just happened. That's and true. That's, that's important. Yeah. It, it needs to be organic. So For sure. Yeah. 